China is rapidly building up its navy, while the U.S. Navy struggles behind. Is it too late to turn this ship around? Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. The U.S. became a superpower thanks largely to its naval power. That's the way it's been throughout history. Sea power makes great powers. That's a lesson that China has taken to heart, and one the U.S. seems to have forgotten. The U.S. is rapidly falling behind China in the number of naval ships. China's navy is now ahead of the curve when it comes to shipbuilding. It's outpacing the U.S. by orders of magnitude. We don't know the exact number of Chinese ships because the Chinese Communist Party doesn't publicize much about its navy. They keep it more hidden than kids playing battleship. But according to the Pentagon's 2022 China Military Power Report, the People's Liberation Army Navy is numerically the largest navy in the world, with an overall battle force of approximately 340 ships and submarines. A lot of it was built within the last decade which proves you can do anything you set your mind to when you don't care about human suffering. According to the Office of Naval Intelligence, from 2000 to 2020, China's battle fleet grew by 150 ships. During that same time period, the number of U.S. ships shrank by 21. The U.S. hasn't had more than 300 naval ships since 2003. This is by far below the Navy's 2016 goal of having 355 ships by 2020. Yeah, the U.S. overshot a bit. It looks like the U.S.'s current force of 298 ships won't reach 300 until sometime in 2033 or 35. That's because according to the Navy's 2023 shipbuilding plan, the number of ships will actually drop over the next decade. And even according to the U.S. Navy's more ambitious 2022 navigation plan, the U.S. will have 350 manned ships by 2045, assuming the plans all go smoothly. But it will still be outnumbered by China, which may already have 400 ships by as soon as 2025. Now, a lot of these ships include support ships. But even if we count only warships like aircraft carriers, surface combatants, and submarines, the U.S. will just maybe match the number of China's ships by 2040. Why is it taking the U.S. so long to make ships? Who's building them? Tom Hanks' character from Castaway? Quit blubbering about your volleyball and get back to work. Of course, numbers don't tell the whole picture. U.S. ships on average are bigger and carry more firepower than Chinese ships. For example, the U.S. has more than 9,000 vertical launch missile cells across its ships compared to China's 1,000, and 50 nuclear-powered submarines compared to China's 7. So this is like that age-old philosophical question. Would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or 50 duck-sized Chinese warships? But the quality of China's ships is catching up. Thank you, Western technology. So the U.S. needs to take quantity into consideration, especially since U.S. forces are spread out globally while China's navy is more concentrated in areas like the South China Sea. The problem is that the U.S. Navy's shipbuilding is in serious jeopardy of falling behind China. According to U.S. Navy Secretary Carlos del Toro, they have 13 shipyards. In some cases, their shipyard has more capacity. One shipyard has more capacity than all our shipyards combined. That presents a real threat. It's not clear the exact type of shipyards he was referring to, but there are at least six major and two smaller shipyards that are building Chinese naval vessels. China's building every type of ship except the most important one, friendship. And thanks to China's military-civilian fusion, China is taking a whole-of-society approach to invest heavily in shipbuilding. The U.S., on the other hand, has seven shipyards that can build large and deep draft ships. But as I've mentioned in a previous episode, a lot of the Navy's infrastructure is really old. The U.S.'s four public shipyards age from 114 to 255 years old. And the equipment there is also aging. One shipyard is 255 years old. That means it's older than America. 
The U.S. isn't even close to being the top shipbuilder in the world. According to the Eno Center for Transportation, the U.S. ranks 19th in the world for commercial shipbuilding, accounting for approximately 0.35% of global new construction. So how did U.S. shipbuilding get so far behind? I'll tell you after the break. Welcome back. At one point, the U.S. led the world in shipbuilding. But things have changed. The U.S. now doesn't even come close to the magnitude of shipbuilding in countries like China, South Korea, and Japan. Now, there are several reasons. In 1981, U.S. President Ronald Reagan ended subsidies to the American shipbuilding industry. Even though the Reagan administration boosted shipbuilding with the goal of creating a 600-ship navy, shipbuilding companies didn't have commercial work to fall back on. That's because there was a collapse in demand for commercial ships. Building ships was so unprofitable that large shipbuilders such as General Dynamics, Sun Shipbuilding, and Bethlehem Steel were driven out of the shipbuilding business. Which must have been awkward for Sun Shipbuilding since, you know, it's in their name. That'd be like Taco Bell saying, stop asking for tacos, we only make bells. Look at the logo. This company was founded by John Taco. By the time shipbuilding demand increased, Japan, South Korea, and China took over the market. U.S. companies couldn't compete against other countries that were becoming better at shipbuilding while subsidizing their industries. According to one U.S. report, between 1987 and 1992, the U.S. shipbuilding industry sold only eight commercial ships over 1,000 gross tons, compared to 77 ships annually in 1975. Man, even disco didn't plummet that hard from the 70s to the 80s. Things only got worse for the U.S. Navy from there. The end of the Cold War saw massive defense budget cuts and decrease in Navy ship orders. As the number of shipyards and ship orders shrunk, shipbuilders and their suppliers started losing business and were forced to lay off workers. That lack of suppliers and skilled workers hampers Navy ship construction to this day. Giving the village people song in the Navy a sad new context, because of the death of shipbuilding and disco. Now, there are less suppliers for the U.S. Navy. According to the Pentagon, from 2000 to 2018, the entire defense industrial base lost more than 20,500 U.S.-based manufacturing firms. Across the shipbuilding sector, manufacturers and suppliers have left the industry, limiting competition. In some cases, the Navy is forced to rely on a single and sole source supplier for critical components. This is especially the case for U.S. submarines and aircraft carriers. Since the late 1990s, the number of Navy shipbuilding suppliers for nuclear-powered submarines and aircraft carriers dropped by more than two-thirds, and more than 65% of remaining suppliers are the single or sole source for their product. It's wild hearing how a branch of the U.S. military is having these kinds of troubles, since the U.S. military being the best is America's whole thing. So what does this mean? It means the U.S. Navy builds and repairs ships very, very slowly. A 2020 Government Accountability Office report found that the Navy's four shipyards completed 75% of its maintenance periods late for aircraft carriers and submarines, that were supposed to be completed between 2015 and 2019. Guess how long maintenance was delayed? Almost 7,500 days. That's over 20 years worth of delays. Yeah, 20 years. Even Chinese democracy had fewer delays than that. The Guns N' Roses album, not actual democracy in China. Gonna be a bit longer waiting for that one. Meanwhile, a lot of corners are being cut. Ships are being sent out on longer deployments with fewer sailors on board. As a result, minor maintenance problems start adding up. This means even longer repairs in the shipyard's backlogs. With fewer ships to take their place, each ship on average is wearing down much quicker, which leads to even higher costs in the long run. On top of that, the U.S. Navy is spending a lot of time and money on new ships with untested tech like the Zumwalt-class destroyer and the literal combat ship. All those billions were spent on a losing streak in ship design while barely improving America's shipbuilding infrastructure. Why can't the U.S. just spend more on improving its shipbuilding? 
Well, it's well known that the U.S. Navy consistently prioritizes other programs, such as weapon system acquisitions over facility sustainment. It's a lot sexier to buy the big guns as opposed to spending money fixing ships. But what's the point of having so many big guns if you have nowhere to keep them? Wow, that might be the least American sentence I've ever said in the history of this show. On top of that, the Department of Defense has money problems. According to the Government Accountability Office, in 11 out of the past 12 years, the Department of Defense has operated under a continuing resolution. What's a continuing resolution? Well, normally, federal departments and agencies, including the DOD, receive funding through annual appropriations acts. That means Congress passes a budget funding them every year. Congress is supposed to do that by October 1st, the beginning of the fiscal year. If they don't pass a budget in time, then the DOD doesn't get funding. So, they're relying on Congress to act in a timely manner. That explains everything, doesn't it? That's where a continuing resolution comes in. It's kind of a loophole that gives government agencies funding for a specific period of time. The problem is, it doesn't say when or how much funding they will ultimately get. In other words, people in the military don't know when and how much money they'll get for that year until sometime later, which limits their ability to spend that money and do things. In 2017, the DOD had to wait 216 days for their actual budget. Not sure how I feel seeing the U.S. Navy operating paycheck to paycheck and scrapping by like a 23-year-old philosophy major. This is a big problem for the military, especially when it comes to contracting for new shipbuilding. Now, it's not as though nothing is being done to help address the U.S.'s shipbuilding problems. From 2015 to 2019, the Navy spent $2.8 billion in capital investments to address shipyard performance. And the U.S. Senate authorized $32.6 billion for Navy shipbuilding in the 2023 National Defense Authorization Act. Though not all of it is actually going to shipbuilding infrastructure per se. Again, weapons are pretty sexy. At this point, I'm starting to think disco will make a comeback before shipbuilding does. The U.S. likely isn't spending enough on shipbuilding infrastructure. According to the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank, the U.S. would need to spend $150 billion in contracts to improve its shipbuilding capacity. Not very attractive to a lot of people, especially given how long it would take to get U.S. shipbuilding up and running. But investing in better ship infrastructure is necessary if the U.S. wants to get ready for war at any point in the future. And the longer they wait to act, the worse it will be. Because even though China is guarding what's in their navy better than kids playing Battleship, we know it's definitely a lot scarier than 50 duck-sized Chinese warships. So what do you think of what's happening with the U.S. Navy? Leave your comments below. If you like this show, remember that we rely mainly on direct support from viewers like you. All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode over on our crowdfunding website, Patreon. It's patreon.com slash America Uncovered for more. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.